United Nations, uh, United States, Germany, France and other G7 countries are calling for an independent and transparent investigation into alleged human rights abuses during the conflict in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. Thousands of people have died and hundreds of others have been forced from their homes. Ethiopia's federal army ousted the former regional ruling party, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, from the capital of Mekele in November. The government says most fighting has ceased, but there are still isolated incidents of shooting. Foreign ministers in the G7 countries have urged all parties to exercise the utmost restraint, ensure the protection of civilians, and respect human rights and international law. Meanwhile, Ethiopia's ambassador to the United Nations says his country has a zero-tolerance policy for sexual crimes. He says anyone found responsible for such despicable acts will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. He was speaking to the Reuters news agency after a detailed humanitarian briefing at the UN revealed mass rapes had occurred. He says more than 500 rape cases have been reported to five clinics in the country's Tigray region warning that the actual numbers are likely much higher. Meanwhile, staff from Medicine Sans Frontiers last week reported seeing Ethiopian soldiers shoot dead four male civilians after ordering them off a bus near the regional capital, Mekele. Statement from 12 senior UN officials last week called for a stop to reports of indiscriminate and targeted attacks against civilians, including rape and other horrific forms of sexual violence which continue to surface. When it comes to sexual and gender-based violence, just to give you facts that in mid-March, five medical facilities at Mekele, Adigrad, Bokro, Sheri and Aksum recorded around 516 rape cases. Given the fact that most health facilities are not functioning and also the stigma associated with rape, it is projected that actual numbers are much higher. And uh, women um, say they have been raped by armed actors. They also told stories of gang rape, rape in front of family members, and men being forced to rape their own family members under the threat of violence. Fighting which began in early November between Ethiopian government troops supported by Eritrean troops to the north and the Tigray People's Liberation Front has since killed thousands while forcing close to one million people from their homes in this mountainous region. With safety and food insecurity cited as the top priorities for people arriving in places like Shire in the northwest of the Tigray region, at a rate of over 1,000 people per day. As food insecurity and nutrition in a worsening socio-economic climate with reduced harvests further complicates the situation on the ground. Most of the internally displaced left with nothing more than the clothes they were wearing. They are generally traumatized and they tell stories of the difficult journey they took in search of safety. Some reported walking for um, two weeks as far as 500 kilometers. And of the people who traveled with them, some were reportedly killed, particularly youngsters. People were reportedly beaten. Women were subject to rape and some were pregnant and delivered on the way, losing their babies. The United States has referred to violence in the region as ethnic cleansing, as Washington presses for a full investigation and an exit of Eritrean troops who have since agreed to withdraw. The administration has repeatedly engaged uh, the Ethiopian gov government on the importance of ending the violence, ensuring unhindered humanitarian access, and allowing a full independent international investigation into all reports of human rights abuses. As you noted, um, Secretary of State Blinken has spoken to the Ethiopian Prime Minister twice to emphasize, em uh, emphasize the United States' concern about the humanitarian and human rights crisis we're seeing. Uh, during his testimony yesterday, he reiterated the situation is unacceptable and has to change, and that we're calling on the Ethiopian government to follow through on its com commitments that it's made. Ethiopia's envoy to the United Nations affirmed that all those responsible for crimes committed would be held accountable. We're trying our level best to apprehend those who committed crimes, egregious crimes, but in the recent time, we call upon them to hand over themselves and have their days in court. This, we believe, is the right approach so that 
We are not giving uh, anyone out there, not only in the Tigray region, but in any parts of Ethiopia, that whoever committed a crime must be accounted. The UN also confirmed last week that a joint investigation between its Human Rights Office and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission would be undertaken as part of a much-needed accountability process for the victims. Sherman Bricepies, SABC News, New York. All right, to discuss the latest on the situation in the Tigray region now, we're joined by Abdullahi Boru Halake, who's Horn of Africa Policy and Security Analyst. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us, Abdullahi. There's been a video that's uh, uh, doing the rounds showing alleged mass killings near Mahibere de Gom. Have you seen it or what are your thoughts about what exactly is happening and just how widespread is it? Thank you. I think we are only at the beginning of um, what has been an incredibly difficult uh, situation. And one of the reasons why most of the information are only now coming to the surface is because the Ethiopian government engaged in a complete media blackout when they intervened early November. As a result, it's only now that humanitarian groups, human rights organization and media outfit are accessing this region. And the pattern from the get-go of the information that are coming in drips and drops is that this was a very systematic attack that not only involved the Ethiopian Defense Forces, but also forces and military from uh, the neighboring country of Eritrea, as well as regional ethnic, if you will, um, uh, militia groups. And so therefore, it's, it's not surprising uh, in the sense that this is happening, it's surprising that, you know, uh, the depth that it has gone to where, you know, denial of food, denial of services, uh, sexual violence, all that can, you know, uh, particularly denial of uh, uh, food, as well as um, 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 using sex as a tool of war could actually, you know, these are things that can, can fall within the larger ambit of uh, crimes against humanity. So I think it's very disturbing. And all the signals that we are getting from, um, you know, um, actors who have got leverage over Ethiopia, they have made it very clear. They want independent investigation. They want their Eritrean forces to leave. But we have not seen any significant step in that regard, as you've heard from the ambassador as well. They are digging in their heels. They are saying that, oh, look, uh, the TPLF are the aggressors. Um, and therefore, these are internal affairs that we will deal with them to the full extent of the law. And that it doesn't work like that when you are part of the international community. I think the next steps will be very important. I just want for, for the sake of your viewers also to just make it very clear that in the next few weeks, uh, June uh, 5th, uh, Ethiopia will go into, a, into an election. Right. This is an already polarized environment within which now the country is going into an election. Uh, so it looks an incredibly far cry from when the prime minister came into power and he was awarded the Nobel Prize. All right. Now let's talk about um, we'll talk about the elections and uh, the likely vulnerability of those who are in the Tigray region. As you heard from that report from my colleague, there's the also incidents of widespread rape, which we know that rape has been used as a weapon of war. What other things don't we know about those conflict, given, as you said, the, the shortage of information, lack of access for journalists and aid groups? Yeah, I think we don't have enough information, um, but we are getting drip and drops, and these can provide, you know, the, we don't have the, the details because it's coming, you know, it, in bits and pieces, all right? And again, you know, we are living in an environment where because the government, you know, uh, imposed a very severe information ban, what we are also have to be very careful is the, the veracity of some of the information that is coming up. Because it's very easy to say that, you know, uh, in an era where, you know, it's not very difficult to manipulate a video, a text and, uh, and, and photos to be on our guard saying that, you know, we need to, uh, to verify some of this information. Simultaneously, therefore, the Ethiopia, the, 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 the ball rests with the Ethiopian uh, uh, state agencies to be able to give access to you know, independent third party groups that can come in and say, look, these are what we found and these are the evidence and it leads to 
person or institution X, Y, and Z, because mm. it's not just individual uh, culpability, but it's also command culpability for individuals. If it's military and it's identified as X unit, the person who is in charge of that unit will be held, even if he's not the one who was actually involved in for the, for, for, for the crime, uh, he can be or she can be held uh, personally li liable uh, for what we call, um, you know, um, command responsibility. And so, therefore, it is going to be very interesting. As far as election goes, right, you know, it's very, you know, the, the, what is going on in the northern part of the Tigray region is very significant and important. However, we shouldn't lose sight of other, other, other sites where human rights violation, where state security agencies have been moving in and committing egregious human rights violation, particularly in the south, uh, around the Oromia region. There are many parts of this country now uh, that, that, is, that, that, that things are slowly bubbling to, to the surface. And it is going to be very difficult for an election that has already been moved from October 5th to June uh, last year, that is, to June 5th to be moved again because things are not stable. So I think the next few weeks will be very, very, very important for Ethiopia. And it's not just Ethiopia. It's a country of about 100 million people. It's about 110 million. If there is any disturbance in that part of the, uh, in, in, in that country, like it has been in 1991, there will be enough exodus of people, not only in Sudan right now, where most of the people from the Tigray region have, you know, sought safety. It will it will impact Kenya. It will impact uh, Somalia because Ethiopian forces, as part of African um, uh, peacekeeping forces inside Somalia, would, that will have impact on them. Never mind, uh, Somalia has not also um, right. uh, solved its electoral impasse so, as we speak. Uh, let's just uh, trace back the conflict, the current conflict. We know that it's been five months now, but historically, can you just explain to us the ethnic federalism, the ethnic nationalist politics that has led us to this point? Thank you. Um, that's a very important question. I think one of the things that you know, your viewers should know is that Ethiopia has a federal government where, you know, it has at the beginning nine, now 10 regions, all right? And this was largely arrived at after, you know, many years of fighting where until this point in 1995, when the current constitution was established, Ethiopia was largely controlled from the center, whether it's the emperor, who was in charge, or the military uh, 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 junta that was in charge until 1991 when it, when it was overthrown. So as such, there are some functions, powers, and responsibilities that rests in Addis, that Addis Ababa, that is the capital city, and there are others that are dispersed. But there is a fair degree of tension between those who want Ethiopia to go back to the centralized state under the guise of unity and and those who say look federalism has not gone far enough as it is we've just tested it for a few years since 1995 to date and so abi the current prime minister that is abi ahmed who came into power in 2018 would want ethiopia to revert back to a centralized state tplf on the other hand they want the federalism to be retained because they were part. They really see this as an opportunity, um, you know, so that one or two groups, uh, ethnic groups or communities, do not benefit disproportionately from the state resources and power. And so this is the division. This is the dividing line that led to the conflict of November, early November, because the, the regional government in Tigray region held their elections and said the date for the election as per the constitution was October 5th, and we want to hold the election then. Abi, on the other hand, said, no, we have COVID. There were other reasons that, 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 that they had tension. Said, no, we have COVID and we cannot hold an election. Things escalated very quickly when TPLF attacked the Northern Command, which is the largest military base for the Ethiopian government in the Tigray region. That was the trigger, but the underlying cause is this diametrically opposed vision of Ethiopia, where Abi and his group and his supporters would want to have centralized authority rather than decentralized federalism that we have. 
Abi moved even further because, you know, uh, after 1991 civil war, they the parties that formed the government were four parties, right? Abi wanted to, Abi dissolved all those parties and TPLF as a constituent uh, member of that part, uh, that, that coalition said, we are not going to be dissolved. Now Abi is having, a, you know, a party called uh, uh, Prosperity Party, PP. And so he will be using that as, as his vehicle. And there are other ethnic groups that support him, but there are others, particularly people from the ethnic group that he comes, that Abi comes from in the Romia region, who fought. For the very for a very long time, leading to you know the the um, uh, the, the, the previous prime minister uh, Desalegn to leave power for Abiy to come into power, they are saying Abiy, much as he comes from our region, he doesn't represent us. Most Ethiopians, mm -hmm. most Ethiopian communities would prefer to have an you know a federal system rather than you know a centralized system, and that is going to be that that is the battle line that is going to evolve. Uh, in the next few months as well. Right. Abdullah, just uh, as a final question, as you mentioned, former Prime Minister um, Desalegn stepped down in order to make way for reform. His detractors, though, say that there were human rights abuses before then. But what will help bring about at least some semblance of sustainable peace or lasting peace? I think there are no easy answers. Uh, that is the most important thing that we need to bear in mind because the distance between these groups are very, very wide. But there are other things that can be done that can bring down the tension. Number one is that mutual recognition of each other. You know, the, the TPLF would have to recognize Abi as, you know, uh, as a legitimate prime minister for now until elections are called. And Prime Minister Abi and his group will have to recognize TPLF as um, a, a, as a legitimate representative of the Tigray people, because they've had the elections, these guys who have been elected, the politicians and representative, they will have to be recognised as such. The next step is for you know foreign groups or foreign militaries to leave Ethiopia region of Tigray. The third and probably the most important thing is a complete ceasefire. And finally, and all none of these are very easy things to come by. And finally, there has to be an accountability for those who are involved on both sides uh, to be brought to account and potentially having a commission that is led and supported by a third party for it to be able to come, uh, to, for, for, for there to be an accountability of, um, um, uh, to, for an investigation for what really happened and those who were involved to be held personally as well as institutionally culpable. Failure to do that, what you will see is a festering within this region, not just the Tigray region, but other regions that in, you know, before the election or even after election, that can blow up into um, a much bigger problem. Ethiopia is not out of the woods. Yeah. And so Afri the African Union, the EGAD, which is the regional um, um, uh, authority in the, in, in the Horn of Africa, all of them need to move with speed and be able to see that there will be a ceasefire, there will be investigation of what happened and the mutual recognition between the two sets of governments. Abdullahi, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Really appreciate it. Abdullahi Boru, Halake Horn of Africa, Policy and Security Analyst.